in charging area. So I can see how, how much the battery can, how much the internal reserve of the battery. And this is a sample of the battery from Battery University with the data record. So in increase internal resistance itself will affect the reduce of battery performing time. So the high from the right side you can from the left side you can see that the internal resistance is lower and the performing time is longer. But see on the right side, higher internal resistance, the so battery performance is reduced. Why? Because there's losses, more losses compared to the left one. And this uh, has a repeat with the two different similar capacity battery. However, the internal resistance is different. And it shows that the performing time is also different. The battery is low, in low internal resistance longer performance. Compared to the one with higher intensity. And this proves to us that the intervention will reduce the battery performance a lot. So, my main purpose, well, we need to consider this better because the, the battery risk is all the old battery, and we need to consider the internal system and ensure that they work over the depth of the battery. Also. And next, apart from that, we'll talk more about the system. Yeah. So, now I'll introduce about the battery voltage and surface temperature monitoring system. So, for the battery voltage measure, Measurements will be using the DC2259 block from uh, analog devices, and for battery surface temperature monitoring, we will be using the resistors. So the DC2259 block has a measurement range of 0 volt to 5 volt, and it is capable of measuring up to 12 cells, as you can see here. And the resistors here are internally connected to the block, and uh, the 12 cells are connected from pin C0 to pin C12. Uh, here is the connection of it in real life. So the DC2259 port uses the SPI communication protocol and here we have the SPI communication circuit with the SPI master, the master device, the MyRio and uh, the 5000 ohm resistor here on the uh, master input slate output pin ensures that the pin will not be floating even when it is not transmitting any data So here we have the state transition diagram for a single DC2259 port So first uh, we will need to initialize the SPI communication protocol with the SPI master, the micro and the first three config command that we send to the DC2259 port ensures that the SPI communication circuits are properly connected and secondly we have the write config command this command is used to set configuration 0 to 5 which is used as the under voltage and over voltage settings of the passive self balancing feature of the DC2259 However, as previously mentioned by Jordan, we will be using the active self balancing port instead so this feature of the DC2259 block will not be used in this project and afterwards we have the start cell and not digital conversion command so this command is used to uh, initiate the port measurements so that we can actually start to measure the voltage from the batteries as the port uh, measures voltage in groups of 3 uh, we will need to send, we will need to send 4 commands uh, to get readings from all 12 batteries so we need to read group A, B, C and D and finally we have the uh, clear reading command so this command clears out the old readings and, and, and enables the block to get new readings again and finally it loops back to the reconfig command to start the cycle again so we can actually daisy chain the DC2259 block and uh, for the daisy chain configuration a, an additional dummy command is needed to generate wake up process to wake up the box connected in the, to the daisy chain and uh, the dummy is needed for every value command of the DC2259 so here we have the state transition diagram for the daily chain DC2259 and uh, as you can see right here uh, before we send any of the valid commands we will need to send a dummy command so uh, the daily chain configuration uses a broadcast command uh, system as the DC2259 box do not have individual addressings and to broadcast the commands we will need to connect an RJ45 Ethernet cable from port B of the first port onto port A of the second port and so on and the maximum broadcast distance of uh, this uh, broadcasting command is uh, up to 100 meters. So we will also need to change some of the jumper settings for daisy chain. So for the first block will be 0, 0, 0, 0 and the subsequent box will be 1, 1, 1, 0. And we will, as previously mentioned by Jordan, we've installed uh, some system protections for the DC2 binary box. Uh, to protect the box uh, as the range of the measurements is only 0 volt to 5 volt for each cell so uh, we have relays until we have the step down converters that are powering up the relays uh, the relays will be tripped and uh, during system warnings when the readings are uh, exceeded the threshold settings which I will demonstrate during the demo session later so we also have a smoke sensor to detect any presence of smoke from the batteries and here we have the analog multiplexer 
This is used for us to connect the thermistors that are measuring the surface temperature of the batteries. So uh, the analog multiplexer uh, is able to reduce the number of pins that is needed to be connected to the MIRIO as it only requires uh, 8 connections to the MIRIO however it enabled us to uh, connect up to 16 thermistors in total and uh, the table on the right shows the commands that to send to the analog multiplexer to select the different channels of it so the command, as you can see the commands here are basically uh, binary numbers 0 to 15 and here we have the thermistors uh, and these circuit connections are basically uh, voltage driver circuits that are connected to one of the input channels of the analog multiplexer and uh, this, as mentioned by Joe earlier, this is how we paste our thermistors on the surface of the batteries and now we're talking about the uh, monitoring systems user interface so uh, this is the main that view dashboard right here so the first thing that the users have to do is that they should set the threshold settings for over and under voltage and temperature and afterwards, to actually start monitoring, the users can just press the start button right here. And as you can see, some of the voltage readings here are higher than the uh, over voltage threshold setting, and hence some of the dashboard indicators here will indicate that this is actually an, an abnormal reading, and it will trigger the system warning. So the system warning, it will, as mentioned, it will trigger the relay, and it will also turn on the buzzer as well as a SMS message sent by the GSM or then device, which I will demonstrate during the demonstration. Uh, during system warnings, the users can actually reset the reset and turn off the system warning. Uh, however, the system warning will keep coming back as long as the readings are still out of range of the threshold settings. And we also have a fourth path for data logging where the users can collect data for further analysis. So here we have the flow chart. Uh, this is for the user interface that I just mentioned. And here is the NI web server dashboard that is enabled by this 4G router right here. So it enables remote monitoring on other devices uh, by connecting to the 4G router. So the NI web server dashboard basically functions the same way as the main web dashboard. So if there are any readings that are still out of range of the threshold settings, the indicators here will indicate that uh, the cell is at normal as well. And here is the GSM modem device. And uh, during system warnings, it will send out a system, uh, system warning SMS messages to the user. Uh, these are some of the data that we've collected uh, during our discharge ex experiment. So as you can see here, the, all the number cells were discharged at around uh, 3.7 volts to 3 volts at a time span of around 3 hours uh, and 30 minutes. So, uh, and the cells were discharged at a 0 0.2 discharge rate. So here we have the temperature curve uh, during that from of cell 1 to cell 12 during that discharge experiment. And this is the temperature curve of cell 13 to cell 24 during the same discharge experiment. And this right here is the uh, temperature curve of uh, the same type of batteries from research paper from a uh, science direct published by Shanghai Jiaotong University and the batteries were discharged at 0 0.3 uh, discharge rate. So we can see the similarities in our temperature curve and in so in conclusion, uh, the system is able to monitor battery metrics during charging and discharging while collecting data for the experiments and we, for system projections, we've installed relays and tools and for system warnings, we have SMS message, buzzer and the dashboard indicators uh, Overall, uh, our system is able to evaluate battery suitability for repurposing to reduce battery waste Thank you <coughs> Okay, thank you, Zidane.